Without further ado, before I call upon our first speaker, I would like to say a special thanks to my successor, who've given me the support that is unexpected, and it's been a truly pleasure working with you on committee. As, as a PP herself, I know it must be a challenge for me to ask her to speak in favor of the motion. But I can remind you, I can reassure you, being president of the union is more challenging than that. But I'm sure you'll do a good job of it. Let's welcome the first speaker in proposition, Molly Mantle, St. Hughes College. Thank you, Mr. President. I actually have my own piece of business before I begin the debate, um, which is that the first event of my term will not be uh, in full term of Hillary, but will begin next Tuesday morning. We're having a special debate with uh, the GC herself, Gemma Collins, coming to debate opposite me um, in the chamber. If you're still in Oxford, please do come along. Um, but without further ado, thank you so much, Chen Kai, for giving me and yourself the opportunity to speak tonight. This is my first paper speech in this chamber. And I'm looking forward to a rematch from our online debate, although I can't help but think you have forced my hand by pitting me against my own degree and my own tutors, who, by the way, I have to go back to next year, um, a final act of skullduggery as a parting gift, perhaps. Um, this debate marks 100 years of PPE. And for 100 years, whilst PPEists like us have been speaking at these dispatch boxes, we have been funneled through the same academic processes and taught the same old ways of thinking. The PPE degree is too powerful and not good enough. And you should have had enough. PPE isn't just some useful red flag when you get your ox matched through. It has taken its place as the degree that runs Britain. And you shouldn't just be fed up. You should be really worried. But before moving on to my substantive case, it falls upon me to introduce the speakers in this debate. On my side of the bench, James Ball, journalist, author, and former Oxford PPEist. He has written for The Guardian and The Washington Post and won the Pulitzer Prize for Public Service with The Guardian US for reporting on NSA surveillance. James Ball has been highly critical of news sites that clickbait stories for profit. But since 2015, he's been writing for BuzzFeed. <laughs> After James, Dr. Rupa Hutt, MP, Labour MP for Ealing, Central and Acton, elected in 2015. She studied social and political sciences with law at Cambridge and was formerly a senior sociology lecturer at Kingston University. She's also a part-time DJ, so really in the perfect place to tell us which degrees work out well. In opposition, Bronwyn Maddox, director of the Institute for Government and former foreign editor of the Times newspaper. It's well known that lots of PPE graduates go to work for think tanks before becoming journalists. I was hoping to find something dramatic and original in Bronwyn's career that I can make fun of tonight, but given she became a journalist and then went to work for a think tank, I haven't really got much to say. In second opposition, Dr. Andrew Graham, political economist, former master of Balliol College and former Oxford PPEist. He was economic advisor to the Harold Wilson cabinet and is currently a senior fellow of the Oxford Internet Institute. According to Andrew's Wikipedia, he's a passionate windsurfer. I can only imagine the Wikipedia editors thought his PPE-inspired degree was far too boring to bet anything about that, and added this in instead to spice up his life. <laughs> Finally, your president, Chen kai Shi, a recent PPE graduate from Brazenose. We're now at the end of Chen Kai's term. The election has been and gone. All our speaker events have finished. And I'm not saying that Chen Kai is a lame duck president now, but I did find him earlier this evening trying to convince one of the security guards that he was a member after his phone died and he couldn't use his digital card. <laughs> really, though, it's been a pleasure working with you this term, and you've been a wonderful president, a great friend, and a, such a wonderful mentor to have around. Um, and I'm so grateful for all of your support and advice. I'm glad that I do get to manage the roasts this term, though. I'm a confident roaster, Chen Kai much more so. Um, we're here to talk tonight about a subject that is tired, irrelevant, and responsible for deeply questionable policies. Um, but enough about Chen Kai, let's move on to PPE. <laughs> Mr. President, these are your guests and they are most welcome. I have three main points tonight. First, that I've had enough of PPE. Second, that I've had enough of PPEists. 
And third, that this lethal combination is leading us towards a tragic end of poor management and broken government. I've had enough of the PPE degree. Like most Oxford degrees, PPE suffers severely from the lack of diversity within academia. This is a problem across all subjects, but it's magnified when the issues on the table are social policy or ethics or how we run the economy. It's crucial that the people who are instructing the minds that tend to go on to shape these policies are coming from a broad swathe of backgrounds with diversity of opinion and a variation in viewpoint that leads to good critical discussion. I'm sure it hasn't escaped your notice that just 20% of professors in Oxford are women. Of our first year philosophy readings though, 40 of 42 were written by men and in Michaelmas, only two of the FHS PPE lecturers were women. In my own time at Oxford, I've only been taught by one woman, and it was noticeable immediately that our tutorials seemed more self-aware and modern than similar topics I'd studied before. Despite calls from students, the PP faculties have not modernized their reading lists and refused to re-examine the structure of the degree. Centralized reading lists aren't really updated, meaning that it's the exception to the rule that an excellent tutor will bring in modern thinking in a topical case study. It remains firmly the exception, not the rule. Because why would you want to change one of history's most powerful and impressive degrees? PPE sadly remains male, pale, and stale. And we should have had enough. If it won't change, we need to find something better. Why is this a problem? Well, the fact that we're having this debate at all should tell you all what you need to know. It's no secret that PPE purports to run Britain. With 270 names on the Wikipedia's notable PPE alum section, PPE is churning out world leaders at a rate of almost three a year, apparently, and more considering that Chiang Kai's name hasn't even been added to the list yet. <laughs> the BBC calls PPE educational Freemasonry, and they're not wrong. Apollo aside, the connections that students form purely by doing the bare minimum of showing up to their tutorials or introducing themselves to the person next to them in a lecture go on to shape careers. At best, this is a club. At worst, this is a calculated exclusion of alternative viewpoints, academic snobbery. And this is bad for the country and bad for the world. In a recent poll of voters on the most important issues facing the country today, the top result was health, over 50%, and almost 40% of people named the climate. I don't like statistics, I dropped economics, but we all know what issues are facing the world today. New technology, which is far too complicated for most of us to understand, has the potential to change the world as we know it in an instant. Climate change is more of a threat than ever before, and so are pandemics, thanks to globalization and improved international travel. These are all issues we've dealt with before, but they're back with a vengeance, and we need a team of diversely trained and qualified people to lead us through it. We need people who are skilled and specialized in all kinds of areas, not just a narrow degree in Westminster politics, which claims to be tripartite. Transferable skills are important, but only if we can apply them to technical skills which also exist. There is no point in having a government full of people who've spent their time learning to fill government. And there's no point pretending to rely on experts when every other cabinet minister has been taught to echo the, the one beside them. The opposition might talk to you tonight about breadth of knowledge, and about how there will always be a place for the study of how people live and interact, or how they understand the world, or how they live in the market. And that's an argument I intend to make to my future employers, so I do hope that it's a little bit convincing, but it doesn't win this debate. We don't need to prove that PPE is totally useless or a waste of all of our time, just that we've got enough of those skills already and enough of those people already. We don't need 2.7 PPEs and more PPEs in government this year and the next year. We urgently need to embrace new skills and new ways of thinking as we move into a new world. I urge you to vote proposition tonight. Without rehashing my personal statement, I love my degree and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to study here. I hope that the other PPEs in the room feel the same, but we shouldn't settle for the way things are. Besides, if it took a team of six non PPEs to write my and Chiang Kai's speeches this morning, how good can this degree really be? Thank you. <laughs>